Hi everybody, my name is Pastor Rob Schmidt and I'm coming to you from Freeland, Michigan where I'm called pastor at Zion Lutheran Church. I also serve at Our Savior Lutheran Church in Saginaw, Michigan. Today I've been asked to uh, reflect for um, the entire chapter of uh, Luke 18 and it's Monday, April 4th. Uh, our dedication is Monday, April 4th today. In this chapter, uh, there's like five basic stories, uh, two about prayer, and then on the other side of a middle story, there is a story about uh, a rich man giving away all of his wealth to follow Jesus, and he cannot, and Jesus telling a story about um, being crucified and dying for a third time, and then there's a, a blind man calling out to be healed. Has, has anyone ever told you, you're doing this wrong? Uh, that's not the right way. Uh, or stop that. Or do it this way. You know, as we begin this chapter, I ponder about uh, being told how to pray. Uh, in our first uh, example, there is a great persistence of a woman who is used in a parable to talk about how she bothers the judge, bothers the judge, bothers the judge, before the judge finally grants her her request. And uh, Jesus is using this to remind us about how prayerful we should be and how persistent in prayer we should be. Uh, and this, it's not as if there's one single way to pray. Um, we can pray in all types of ways. Uh, the second example is about uh, a Pharisee and a tax collector. And the Pharisee is up in the front of the church, proudly praying what he does and how he does it. And the, uh, the tax collector shamefully in the back, confessing their sinfulness. What is your favorite prayer form? How do you enjoy most to pray or talk to God. There is no specific rule here. Our memorized prayers, like the Lord's Prayer or any other you have made memorized, serenity prayer, the glory be to God, are these your prayer go-to? Um, are you a spontaneous prayer where you like to pray when and how it suits you? Or hits you. Maybe you're a stop sign prayer. You know, every time you come to a stop sign, you say a prayer or a red light for whatever's on your mind or going on in the world. Maybe you're a TV commercial prayer. Every time you come to a TV commercial, it's time to pray. Um, when someone says to you, will you pray for me? How do you handle that? Do you pray immediately? Do you know how to text a prayer? Yeah, texting prayers is awesome. You just text somebody, I just prayed for you. There are so many ways to pray and in this chapter we are outlined with persistence in prayer. We are outlined with uh, humility in prayer, uh, beautiful ideas of prayer. And toward the end of this chapter, you know, we get this idea of what are we willing to let go of to follow Jesus? A poor rich man uh, is told, sell everything that you have and follow Jesus. And he goes away heartbroken. I wonder, is there anything in your life that if it was really pressing, you absolutely would say, I cannot give this away. I will not do that. I will not change my schedule to go to worship. I will not offer money because the church is not responsible. Here we see a rich young man, as Jesus loved this young man and named the very thing that he could not let go of. The very thing that stood between his following Jesus in earnest and wholeheartedly I'm certain that we are not distracted in our faith by our work, our job or bills that need to be paid. 
I'm sure that we keep God first by following the first three commandments, all about our relationship with God. I wonder, is there something in your heart and life that is need to be sold off or gotten rid of for you to follow Jesus better? Finally, there's an allusion to a man who's blind and is told, be quiet, stop calling out to Jesus. And yet he continues to call out to Jesus for a healing. Maybe another thought today in our prayerful gathering is, what do you need to still keep crying out to Jesus for? What aspect of healing and hope and faith can you seek through the continued yelling to God. Have mercy on me. Have you ever gone outside in the woods or in the neighborhood where people aren't watching and just yelled, have mercy on me, God? And finally, we're given the encouragement of children. Jesus says, act like children. Be like children, innocent and honest and forthright. And perhaps the way we're supposed to do all of these things, ask for help, pray, put things aside, is like a child with enthusiasm and gusto and energy. Today, I thank you for sharing some time in this fantastic project being put together by Pastor Hoven in Salem in uh, Orlando, Florida. And we close today with a simple prayer. Let us pray. Holy God, invite us to grow in our ability to pray. Invite us to grow in our persistence. Invite us to grow in our ability to call out for help and identify those things that may block our faithfulness to follow you and help us be as a child is, footloose, fancy free, and just let it all hang out as we cry out to you this day. Amen. God's peace and blessings to you all this day.